Cody to the side. I'm a director of the board. I got a little bit of influence <laughs> here in the WWE. Like what, what made you make that decision? Uh, you know, at a certain point in time, you just have to make pick pick a. It or, was it was Dwayne. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs> did but, you did you ever expect the response to that loud on social media? I'll be so honest. For me, I did. You know, I kept saying like, I, man, I just don't want you to get booed in this. The Rock is now the most important and powerful figure in the world of wrestling. 252 weeks live, that's a lot of Rock raising the eyebrow every week for Netflix. <laughs> it's evident from that clip that The Rock is poised to take center stage in WWE Raw on Netflix, especially in that inaugural year. The Rock already had a long-standing relationship with Netflix, holding the record for their biggest movie opening with Red Notice, a film produced by his studio, Seven Bucks Productions. How much did The Rock's announcement have to do with Netflix signing this record-breaking deal? Big moment for us, I think, Nick and I as partners. My grandmother was running small, a small wrestling promotion in Hawaii back in the early 80s, and that's we were running around as kids back there. So we go way back, and that's what's next for me, with, for me. So the idea of building with Nick, with Ari, with Mark Shapiro over at TKO, that's exciting to me because it all connects back to something that's in my blood, this world of wrestling. Notably absent from the spotlight was Triple H, definitely suggesting a shift in power dynamics, that he loses sleep every day due to the fact that he is operating out of billions of dollars of debt. Why would he give The Rock $30 million and gave him probably what is the most valuable trademark in the WWE library, The Rock? along with 26 other trademarks, including ones that he hasn't used yet. As a huge fan of The Rock, memories of Survivor Series 98 flood back, corporate rock, a swerve no one saw coming. But amidst discussions of Hollywood rock, there is a much bigger match brewing than the one with Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, or even Triple H. How well, did a hero disappoint you? Uh, the Rock. If you don't fix it, we will. You're lucky you are too. This, this is one of the saddest uh, moments of my life. What I'm about to say. We made a couple of videos together, me and uh -huh. Dwayne, back in the day when I was making Instagram Vine sketches. And sweetheart, gave me the time of day, had a nice conversation. It was awesome. Very friendly with each other. Like, me and Dwayne, what's up? Uh, after uh, Japan happened, obviously found myself in a hole, rightfully so. And I got a call from my publicist who also repped Dwayne, <laughs> The Rock Johnson. And, um, She's like, hey, Dwayne has asked that you remove every uh, picture and video that you've you've done with him, and and maybe maybe in the future, you know, the, the relationship can be reconciled. But for, for for now, he basically wants nothing to do with you. Huh? Did you reach out again? I, after I, after I, the... I did not reach out. He he did about maybe like five months ago. Ooh. No, three months ago. How did he reach out? Like nothing ever happened. Uh, Instagram DM. Yeah. You know that you know that video where the monkey took my prime. Yeah. He thought it was funny. And what did you do? Did you reply? Mm -mm. In 2002, he listened to his agent. He listened to all the people and said, hey, you've got to disconnect. Remember, his early movies didn't make any money because he walked away cold turkey. And the WWE Universe said, we made you. I'm not spending $10. And by the way, one of the people Rock has shared with me and Vince has shared with me, Rock called Vince and said, this is not working. You know, I think I want to sort of reattach to WWE. I think I need to get a new agent. Vince helped him do that. Recently in Hollywood Reporter, and it was talking about, you, you talked about how you uh, sw switched agents because you felt that maybe you needed to change things up in order to, um, to improve your career. People around me, here's one. Here's the big key, by the way, this is important. I also needed people around me who just, who believed in optimism and believed that we can get it done. The Rock's last few movies weren't box office winners, and he hasn't actually had a movie come out since 2022 with Black Adam. If he would have stayed on Monday Night Raw from 2002 to 2005, he would have probably made another three to five hundred million dollars. I won't get into it here too deeply as this video would become too long. Bottom line is, it seems the mainstream audience is either burnt out or feel that The Rock is somewhat not genuine as he has been caught in a number of unfortunate situations, to put it lightly. A fake Joe Rogan pretending he was happy to have The Rock in studio, and a fake The Rock pretending he was happy for Joe Rogan. Dwayne Johnson seemingly lies about eating in and out for the first time. That he's trying in and out for the first time every couple of years. Why, why are you lying about that? They came to cancel him. And in that moment, the biggest star in Hollywood, The Rock, 
piled on. Suits are just using him like a fucking fleshlight, like this puppet of ventriloquism act, where they are talking through the rock. That is a good combo. Here we go. Yeah, he couldn't even eat a meal without plugging his own shit. And the reasons behind it were wildly political. And either way, I'm sure that The Rock is hoping that wrestling fans, similar to his experience 10 years ago, can provide the fuel to help write his box office ship. But if that doesn't end up the case, I'm sure he will take on a much more hands-on role in WWE. And showcasing the power of that and what that could be, especially for a business that I love, I know that Nick loves, in this world of WWE and professional wrestling. If Nick Khan isn't the CEO of WWE now, do you think you're back? Probably. Really? Wow. While many WWE fans will tell you that the television product has never been better, there is one man that has put the WWE on his back. Bully Ray knows this. Rock and Triple H do not like each other. They have never liked each other. This is stuff I've never shared, but I do want to share it because it's important, is that... Despite the public camaraderie between Triple H and The Rock, their relationship may not be as amicable as it seems. I do want to share it because it's important, is that when I started to make the move and word started to get around that The Office was priming me for a WWE championship run. There were a handful of guys in the business at that time. They did everything they could to stop that run from happening. The dream is coming true. Like, this is it, man. I finally feel like this is what I was born to do. And man, it's feeling so fucking good. Guys in the locker room, all everybody taking me under their wing. There's some political bullshit that you always want to stay away from. I've always stayed away from that. I get it now. Chad Frost wasn't a real wrestler. It's a pseudonym. That's right. That guy never turned out to be a friend. Oh yeah, he almost <laughs> heartburn kid. And I'll just leave it there. Oh, my wrestling blogs? <laughs> they are going to be blowing up about Chad Frost's true identity. <sighs> You know, I was friends with you coming in, but when Sean came back, I wasn't really friends with Sean. In fact, like, the first time I met Sean, I was going over a promo with Rock, and he, like, was up. So, Rock's got his own personal writer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go here we go again. But for the most part, everybody's supportive. Speaking you know, of rockers, I wanted to talk about your relationship with The Rock a little bit. Did you? What's your opinion on The Rock? As far as, I know, Sheets have said you guys have personal views. What did we just see? I'm here, Rock. I don't know how true it is. I mean, really? I, I don't know. It's kind of you made up like this as far as... I don't I can remember Triple H on a flight to Dubai and talking about Dwayne. Can you believe this guy? He thinks he's a superstar. Triple H just pick on every night. In fact, Triple H finds himself in a very precarious position regarding his job security after his wife has been exposed as a potential accomplice in the Vince McMahon shit show. Triple H was the same. He was always out to get Rock. Did you know that The Rock's childhood friend was the executive producer for his now canceled TV show? show Young Rock and who collaborated closely with former head of creative at WWE, Ryan Gerwitz. Those two guys walk hand in hand, lockstep. A lot of people don't realize that the brilliance behind all of those classic rock uh, promos was Brian Gerwitz. On the scripts. You know, we would work with Vince. Vince would tell us what, you know, he wants to do. I'd get the call from Stephanie Sunday night right before going to TV talking about Triple H's displeasure with it. Um, it was, and then what, how are we going to figure it out? We'll figure it out at the show. Okay, great. On the scripts. Interestingly, that person happens to be Nick Khan's sister, forging a unique connection between The Rock and Nick Khan, who are childhood friends themselves that when Endeavor acquired UFC, allowing Dana White to retain significant control while they focused on maximizing profits. With Vince McMahon no longer at the helm, WWE faces a very unique transition. Can't tell you how many times I've told Nick, come on, man, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> the partnership between The Rock and Ari Emanuel has undeniably shifted the power dynamics within WWE. The Rock's bloodline now reigns supreme, marking a significant departure from the McMahon era. Vince McMahon and Dana White have a knack for reshaping history to suit their current narratives. Wrestlers who once held the spotlight could be quickly erased. Legacies cast aside like yesterday's news. So what's to stop The Rock from following suit? The hierarchy of power in the WWE universe is about to change. WWE's gesture of gifting him his name carries immense significance. Vince McMahon's appreciation for the value of name is well known, considering his history of trademark ownership. 
no, I cannot be uh, Cody Rhodes wherever I go that is uh, televised. I wish that was different, and it should be different. I know of Vince holding on to way less valuable trademarks just out of spite. Call you The Rock, he said, now that I own it, I can call you The Rock. Yes, I own it now, you can call me The Rock. The WWE finds itself in a new narrative landscape, now owned by a corporation that values The Rock's opinions above all others. In early 2000, The Rock was looking for something new he could say to his longtime rival, Triple H. As we met backstage early that afternoon, I pointed out a particular speech pattern that I, as a fan, always noticed. He had a habit of attaching a big, uh, to his words. So tonight, uh, in this very ring, uh, that kind of thing. You come out here and you run your mouth and every single week you subject all of us. I admit, my goal in pointing out Triple H's uhs wasn't altruistic. I just wanted The Rock to have something he could sink his teeth into and make fun of. I explained this all to Rock and even imitated Triple H's voice. Rock found it hilarious and wanted to use it in his promo with Triple H that night. All we had to do was get it approved by Vince. To watch you stand in the middle of the ring, grab a microphone, and you say this. We strode into Vince's office to find Hunter and Stephanie and all of DX. I hadn't exactly endeared myself to DX at that point. It was just weeks earlier when I was supposed to produce a DX vignette backstage. I walked in feigning confidence, outlining the scene and camera positioning and the blocking as I asked if anyone had any questions. I got one, Billy Gunn replied. Who the f*** are you? So it wasn't exactly a warm room when Rock and I strode in. Vince asked what we had in mind. With Triple H looking on intently, Rock took over. Hunter, you're gonna love it. You guys are out there doing your thing when my music hits. I go to the top of the ramp, and every time you open your mouth, it sounds like this. Rock gave a dramatic pause, then turned to me and said, Brian, do the voice. My heart momentarily stopped as Hunter, Steph, and all of DX turned their heads in my direction. With little choice, I did the imitation. Tonight, uh, I am the game. And in this very ring, uh... For the next 20 minutes, uh, I'm going to be talking, uh, and saying absolutely nothing, uh... Vince guffawed pretty loudly, as only he can, and gave his approval as DX sat quietly. Triple X just nodded and said, sounds good. But I detected actual steam coming out of his ears. And saying absolutely nothing, It was a look I got from him early and often in my tenure at WWE. During the announcement of the Netflix deal on Wall Street, The Rock was prominently featured with talk centered around his legacy and family. The Rock, known for his calculated decision making, wouldn't align himself with WWE without careful consideration. Similarly, Hollywood power players like Ari Emanuel, who aspire to be remembered alongside luminaries like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. I'm sure you call Wind of the Rock's recent appearance on the Pat McAfee show a chance to test drive his new heel persona. But just as quickly as he embraced his villainous side, he flipped the script, ensuring everyone knew it was all part of the show. So hashtag that. Hashtag shut your jashes up. Hashtag Cody Crybabies. That's the fun part of what we do. That's wrestling. It's pro wrestling. That's WWE. Part about money without good reason. The Rock's return to WWE signifies a very strategic move. Ari called Vince McMahon a visionary. But days before this Netflix and there was this report that stated how much of a drain Vince McMahon is on potential sponsorships. And if there's one thing I've learned in years of business, it's that you don't stand in the way of money and a suit. Could you take me back to the embryonic stages of when this all started? You're at CAA, decade, you're on top of the game, you are the agent, right, in this world of sports broadcasting. But when did it all start? When did the idea of you coming to WWE start. Paul Levesque, the King of Kings, Triple H, he's the one who introduced me to WWE. When I was an agent, my prior profession, and I was trying to get into the WWE business, Paul had called me, unsolicited call, and this is when Tim Tebow had just gotten cut by the Patriots. Paul called me, said, hey, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Paul Levesque. I said, I don't know who you are. He's like, oh, you know WWE? I said, yeah, I know WWE. I grew up a fan. Hey, what do you think of Tim Tebow against the big show at whatever that WrestleMania was after the Patriots 
run. Oh. Tim and I had then a top secret private meeting. Tim Tebow, myself, Vince McMahon, Triple H in Anaheim, California about that. And I, Triple H and I remained in touch. If he was childhood friends with The Rock, why would Triple H call him unsolicited? Could he mention that he knows The Rock? Why is it so hard for him to quote unquote, get into the WWE business? Nick doesn't say anything for no reason. Yeah. He basically went off and developed his own relationship very separate from The Rock. Even publicly, we didn't know about it until years later when The Rock makes that infamous Instagram post. So the last round of U.S. negotiations, with, which ultimately ended up with Fox and NBCU, we all did that together. So we had success in that. And as you know, success can oftentimes breed closeness amongst individuals. So, but here's a very ironic aside. So there was a report that Fox actually forced the WWE to use another agency as they originally were represented by Ari Emanuel and Endeavor in those negotiations. But because Fox were also negotiating with Endeavor over the rights on the UFC, Fox considered that a conflict of interest. This then pushed WWE to go to The Rock's old agency, CAA, which Nick Khan was now basically the head of, and which was the top rival to Endeavor and Ari Emanuel's company. August of 19, Triple H, uh, he and his wife, good friends of mine, invited me and my wife to his 50th birthday party. Tell us about New Hampshire, about Triple H's 50th birthday. Wow. Yeah? Yeah which was really his closest friends and family member. There might have been over 50, but not much. Okay. As far as how many people were there. And like Paul said, it's like only people I will. Right. Like, actually. Like, it could have been a, a, yeah. a lot bigger. And actually a lot of people, I think, got their feelings hurt. So at that party, obviously, Vince was there. Linda McMahon was there. And it was the first time that I thought to myself, wow, this really feels comfortable. It felt like family to me. So when Vince called me and said, hey, there's an opportunity here. I want to hire someone who I, Vince, think is a non-traditional uh, executive for this role. He was interested in getting together the next day, so I flew on a non-stop Honolulu to New York. We got together and we shook hands on a deal. I assume it was different for you with Vince, but how was that relationship day one on? Was it great? In a private setting, if said respectfully, you can say anything you want to him. You can disagree with any point of view, and the folks who have succeeded tremendously at WWE Kevin Dunn, Paul Levesque, many, many others. They all had that trait where you understood this is the boss. So you're not going to call him out if you disagree with something. He's polite by nature, as you know. Agreed. He preferred to be polite, but he's certainly comfortable if it has to go a different route. So what I found with Vince was I could say anything to him directly in person as long as it was in a respectful way. And he'd always hear it. And oftentimes he'd agree with it. The partnership between The Rock and Ari Emanuel has undeniably shifted the power dynamic within WWE. The Rock's bloodline now reigns supreme, marking a significant departure from the McMahon era. And Vince McMahon and The Rock's interaction will tell you everything that you need to know in terms of the future of WWE. If there's one thing everyone took away from this Vince McMahon shit show, it's that these rich and powerful people view human beings as toys, but it's all about power. And here in this moment is Vince trading in his best toy for a few more moments of power. This tragic occurrence has shocked all of us here in the World Wrestling Federation. In doing that, I made you a crippled freak. But Owen kicked right out after three. Why? To make himself look strong like he was barely beat. That kick out hurt me like 